Hello guys, Marie here and it's time for another art challenge from Pilot Nordic and if you haven't watched my other pilot challenges I will leave a link to them here somewhere, there perhaps or there, I never learn on which side the eye is so Pilot Nordic is also sponsoring this video so thank you and they sent me a box of their supplies for me to try out in this video and to make it a little more interesting they also sent me a challenge so what I'm gonna do in this video, as you may already know because you can read the video title, I'm gonna draw upside down and that will be very very interesting because I have tried to draw upside down before and it didn't turn out that well, so this will be very interesting and fun and challenging. So they sent me a whole bunch of these colorful pens and this pretty golden curly string. I also like to mention that even if this is a sponsored video I will still say my own and honest opinion about the products as usual. So I will be using these Pilot Friction color pens for my drawing and these are fiber tip pens that comes in 12 different colors and the ink is erasable just like the Pilot Friction highlighters I used in my previous Pilot challenge. They also sent me a super thin friction point pen that I can use like a fine liner for the artwork. All right, enough talking, let's start the challenge. So yeah, these pens are erasable. As you can see, the ink is removed by the heat generated by the friction when erasing. I have one of these as a ballpoint pen that I've been using for a month now and I just love it. I had an idea of using these pens like watercolors or like watercolor pencils, you know, since they are water-based, I think. And I just like to experiment and using supplies in different and new ways. So I tried adding water to them and it seems like it's working, the ink is dissolving. And what I was also curious about, can you still erase them after using them with water? And actually, yes you can. Pilot why don't you make erasable watercolors? I wanted to draw a human because I thought it would be easier to see if I messed anything up when drawing a face since there are some sort of guidelines to follow like the eyes needs to be in the right place and the nose and mouth and such. You will see the drawing from the right angle the opposite way from how I see it so you will see what's happening and you can see the mistakes I'm making that I can't see myself. And yeah, just the moment I started drawing I realized how hard this would be it is a little like being half blindfolded and drawing with your wrong hand. You can't really see what you're doing and it is very hard to control your hand moves. You kind of have to think backwards and draw things the opposite way from what you normally do, what you're used to. And I really had to stop myself a few times from turning the paper around. And I know some of you may think I'm silly and you do this every day without any trouble but to me this is one of the toughest art challenges I've done because I never draw upside down and I have tried it before but I've never done it this serious and this big and my brain isn't used to thinking this way and it is like some people are doing the ballpoint pen challenge and to me it isn't a challenge because I'm used to drawing with ballpoint pens, I had a lot of practice and it has become natural to me, but to someone something can be very very easy, but to someone else it is very hard and challenging because they hadn't had a lot of practice. So we're all used to different things and has different experiences. So the victim for this challenge is Link from the new Zelda game Breath of the Wild, I'm sure you heard of it. And I promise I will do proper fan art of this later too, this one is just for funsies. I also decided to go with a fairly easy straightforward pose and face expression since I knew I was gonna be struggling with this and I wanted to do something easy. Then I started coloring with a friction color pen. Since there are many larger areas, I wanted to put down a base layer of the pen ink mixed with water first to easier fill in the space. And I thought that would be easier than just using the pens themselves with the small nibs for the whole drawing. 
and I didn't have any good skin tone color either so I figured I could just mix that myself. So I scribbled with the pens on a piece of plastic and then I took a brush with water and dipped that in the ink and used it like paint. And it didn't turn out super vibrant or anything but I still like the softer look of it and it actually worked pretty well. But I also used the pens the normal way and drew with them directly on the paper. But then I also added some water on top of that to smooth out some of the harsher lines and blend some of the colors together. It was a little like using watercolor pencils as I mentioned before. And I actually really like these pens. They are very bright pastel colors and the nibs are quite soft too so they feel very nice to draw with. I would have loved these pens as a kid I always use these sort of pens but the non-erasable kind. I love to have these as brush pens too and just doodle around with. And if you like to see more colorful products from Pilot go check out Pilot Nordic's Instagram account. They have a giveaway every Tuesday where you can win their awesome pens and products and stuff and they post a bunch of inspiring drawing videos and pictures. I will leave a link to their Instagram in the info box below so be sure to check that out. And and say hello to them from me. So back to Link here. I actually wanted him to be a lot smaller on the paper, but somehow his portrait ended up filling out the whole paper instead. I noticed it was very hard to plan ahead, and even if I thought I made pretty small shapes, it still turned out a lot bigger. I also struggled a lot with the eyes and the eyebrows to make them look good and even, and getting the nose centered, and it felt like there was something wrong that I didn't know what was wrong and how to fix it and I will show you how it looks from my side. I think it looks pretty different actually. The proportions was very difficult and for the neck and shoulders I kind of just guessed a little what would look good and there is a lot of guessing involved here. And yeah I know Link's hair isn't this yellow and green, I just wanted to make it more colorful and play around with the pens and colors. So yeah, drawing something upside down is actually a very very good drawing exercise because when you are drawing something upside down you are really activating your right side of the brain, the part of the brain you use when drawing and such. And if you are using an image of a house for example as a reference and if you are drawing the house the right way you see exactly what it looks like with a roof and windows and a fence perhaps, you know what a house looks like and you immediately see what you are drawing and your brain doesn't have to do that much work really. But when you take that same image of a house and turn it upside down, the roof and the window and the fence, it all turns into a bunch of lines that is so much harder for your brain to recognize and identify. So when you are drawing that image of a house upside down, you need to really focus on what you're drawing with the shapes and the lines and all that. because. Your brain isn't used to seeing houses upside down, I guess. You need to focus on the shapes themselves and the lines. I'm definitely gonna practice more on these upside down drawings. So that is something I can really recommend you to try. And turning a drawing upside down while drawing is also a very good way to see if there is anything wrong in a drawing, if the proportions are off and so on. I usually do that when drawing something that is supposed to be symmetrical or fairly symmetrical like a face and I want to make sure that everything looks even and that is why I wanted to turn this drawing around so bad. I wanted to make sure that everything looked good. Then after adding all the colors and making Link look super colorful and fabulous, even if the camera isn't picking it up properly, I started adding outlines with a friction point pen. It is like a super super fine ballpoint pen, it was really nice to work with even if it clogged up a little from the colors underneath but it wasn't that bad. I used it to outline the whole drawing and add some finer details and make some sort of extra shading to give Link some more contrast and depth. Alright, so the moment of truth. Let's just turn this around and see what it looks like. 
Oh, oh my, this looks so different. The eyes looks a lot closer. Yeah, they are a lot closer to each other than I thought I drew them, so... And the nose is so tiny. But I just like to tilt the mouth a little and move it to the right. It is a bit off-centered. And the earring looks a bit weird. I'm not even sure if this is the right ear for the earring or if it has two earrings. I don't remember. The hair looks so high from this angle and like short in this way. But when I drew it upside down, it felt like it was a lot shorter or flatter. In my opinion, it actually looks a lot better from upside down than from the right angle, but I am actually a bit surprised on how good this turned out. I was a little concerned in the beginning when I started drawing because it just felt like it would turn into a mess. It is weird how tricked the eye and the brain can be when you just turn something upside down. But yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this challenge and I hope you like it too and I really recommend you to try this. It is a really really fun and interesting and good drawing exercise. So, so yeah, I think that's all for this video and if you like to see more drawings and weird challenges, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like and a comment and all that stuff. It is highly appreciated. I appreciate all the support I can get at the moment. So, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!